Can can we make a very quick round of um, presentation? Just just the place where you are coming from. Yeah, Hamburg. Hi, I'm from Hamburg. From Bonn. From Weimar. Vienna. Italy. Italy. Lübeck. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Toronto, Canada. We'll be in Spain for a while. Okay. Hannover. Bremen. Berlin. Using. Weimar too. Okay. Thank you. And and all of you are related to some Freifunk in some way. Yeah? How many of you have heard of Libre Router or Okay. And can anyone describe uh what what do you think Libre Router is or yeah? Yeah. Or what, what, what do you know about it as a project? Anyone? Yeah. Open hardware, as far as I know. Good. More. Opa. Yeah. It's still in development. <laughs> it's still in development. No, yeah. no router available yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, many radios, good for meshing. <laughs> okay, more. I like this. More. <laughs> Bitte. <laughs> no? Okay. Just a second. <laughs> Maybe it's too early. <laughs> okay, so all of all of that is true. I wanted to also present then. Um, so as as you as you presented uh, your um, origin, this is a bit the team that is pushing this project, and it's also very much. Uh, Diverse. So we have, like Terry, we, we we had all this year. Terry in Australia doing more the like the hardware. Um, yeah, more the, the tech stuff or like the electronic electronics stuff, and then uh, here more in Europe with the uh, Pow and Geo, we've been developing the firmware for this, and in Argentina, uh, Nico. I'm, I, I'm presenting people that can't be here but are, are part of the team, so that we can get uh, some perspective. Because for me, this is one of the values. Of course, it's a, a router with many radios that is good for meshing. It's something that is still in development, uh, and. Uh, and it's open source hardware, but for me, it's also an, a very worldwide project made by my by grassroots community members, which is something very rare in my in my in my opinion. And that I think we should do more. We should do this kind of bridges and try to get together because the result is very good. Maybe the router takes a year more to be produced than what is originally planned. But the relationships, like the human relationships that are built during that time, are uh, also very valuable. And yeah, then yeah, that, that would be a, a bit overview. Now, since a month ago, we do have a router. And <laughs> it's it's only a, a first prototype, so it's um, there are many things. Like for example, as you can see here, <laughs> the the most the most um, 
for, to me, like the most simple bug kind of happened. Th that is, there was some wiring error in the in the Ethernet ports, and so the the Dragino had to make this this um, workaround so that we could still test the prototype. And it was funny because a year ago I met with uh, Paul Gardner from I don't know if you know Serval project. Does it sound? Does it ring a bell? Uh, well, I I read somewhere that he was in in here in Germany testing some first prototype of uh, hardware he was developing for Australia, and and he was like, I definitely want to help with that, and and when I met him, he 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 told me that he was very much surprised that the Ethernet ports on his board were also badly done. Like there was some error in, in, the, in, the, in the wiring and he could not get the Ethernet ports to work. I, 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 I spent a day with him trying to work around it and I couldn't. And, and I was like, whoa, this is, this is much more complex than, than what I originally thought. I would have never thought of asking a manufacturer in, in Hong Kong that, that has a long experience doing routers, and especially uh, 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 Wi-Fi routers, and getting the Ethernet ports wrong. Like that, for me, was a total surprise. This is one of the lessons learned more. Um, uh, and I was even more surprised because I knew this could happen from, the, from having this experience with Paul. I knew this could happen, like this was something that could happen. And even then, we could not prevent it. Like when the first prototype was out of the factory, the Ethernet ports went wrong. <laughs> and I laughed so much because I was like, <laughs> we talked about this a year ago, like when I, when I met Paul and I said, oh, this is not going to happen to us. Like, of course not. Like Dragino has years of experience doing hardware. There's like, the bugs are going to be much more subtle or much more complex, not the Ethernet ports. And yes, of course, that happened. <laughs> so, um, Marek from, from OpenMesh, from Batman, told us, when we started back in the Battle Mesh in Porto, we made a small presentation, and, and he told us, it's very good that you're, you're joining this boat of hardware developing, because we need to, and you are going to, um, even if you know the problems that can happen, they, they, they will happen anyway. And I was like, no, no, of course not. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Then, having said that about the ports, the first prototype, based on, 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 on other experience, is, is, is very good. It's in a very good shape. Like Terry, who has also been doing this for, for years, and also Electra, who I think is not here, but um, both said that they were surprised by the result, like that so much is working on a first prototype. Daniel, I think, as well. Um, I could show, I don't know if, if you're interested or not, but um, so basically the, the, um, the radios are working, there is some issue with the this is this is right now there is some issue with the chain one like the the this this chain of the onboard radio and s there is something weird with the switch it is working but one of the interfaces of the sock is not apparently not properly connected and but besides that and there are also some very small details like the the mounting holes are not aligned to what the case should be and so this is these are all things that for us were like oh we should fix this but on the other hand and this is also for me it was a, another key lesson was that the size is way too big and for me this is okay it's, like incredibly big, but not a problem. Like if you put it in, in, a, in a rooftop, you don't care if it's this small or big. But for shipping, 
it indeed makes a huge difference. And that's something that I also would not have thought about. But Draghino is very much conscious about that and so wants to basically re redesign the whole thing to be smaller and more modular, if, if, if we could say, which is going to be a second prototype. We expect to have that in the first quarter, which probably means by mid-year, <laughs> mid I don't know, I, I don't know anymore. Huh? Yes, also, yeah, this, that, that's, that's another long story. <laughs> the ch yeah, anyway. Um, so this is, this is a very brief status report on the current uh, development or on the current progress. Now, I would like to know, what, what do you want to know? Like, what, what are you interested in, in finding out? Surprise. Surprise. The price. Price or price. <laughs> so, um, so far we, we have been able to keep with our original target that the whole bundle would be around $100 which includes, like the whole bundle be means this inside a nice box with two MIMO antennas and the box, uh, this, this might change with, 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 with uh, yeah, this might change a bit, but that's the, the use case we have in mind. I may have some photos, um, but anyway, so two, two MIMO antennas uh, five gigahertz, so that you can mesh with those. No, no, with with the three radios. So like the internal radio and the two PCI modules, and all the cabling, so that you can have like like two connectors per radio, and you can cable the, those two antennas. So it's like the full node. The idea is that the full node uh, would be around $100. The last, the, the last modifications, like Dragino said that maybe it would be like 105 or 110, but the, but the main problem is the, the shipping. Like this, 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 this prototype is really not good for shipping because the box is so big. And so shipping cost, if, if it's uh, uh, like huh? in an airplane, it's impossibly expensive. Like it might be, I don't know, fifty dollars of shipping per unit, which is totally nonsense. And, and also, there is a, a small difference in cost of the PCB and all the things if you make it smaller. But the main problem is the shipping in in right now. Uh, but so yes, we are still aiming and having this price range, which is at least for our needs, quite good. Like it's something that people in this remote little towns, I, I, I'm not making a presentation like Isa already presented this. Many of you were not there, but if you want to find out more, where are we planning to deploy these routers? You can go into altermundi.net or centeleni.net, which is in South Africa. So there is a whole part of the team in South Africa uh, doing solar like uh, adapting or working on the things that they need for their context um, in the case of argentina the plan is that each house will have one of these full nodes which is this with a poe uh, cables for the antennas the antennas all mounted in a pole and basically that. And so you can point one antenna to another house, the other antenna to the other house. They will be on different channels and you will have a very nice performant mesh. Very easy, like with zero, zero configuration or, yeah. With an hmm? Yes. So the, the people deploying this are totally non-technical. They are not nerds 
for uh, yeah it's just they 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 use uh, an Android app to check the signal level which is also something new for them but they understand it because there is a graphic like they not they don't necessarily need to understand what's a DB and why is it negative like why is it under zero or anything it's just a graph which is the higher the better and that's it uh, will this ship with uh, different antenna options <laughs> yes uh, I mean so far we are focusing on our use case or our needs because that that was the whole point since the beginning like if 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 from that point this is useful to more communities which we expect that to happen then great and 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 if those communities kind of um join and participate and say oh we we would need a different antenna and so we will we will um see how to ship this with a different antenna then yeah super like okay. this this will create a much more diverse and uh it will also help other communities and you can buy it uh, yes yes of course so you like um you we are not, we are not we are as, as a libre router project we are not going to sell this mm -hmm. to like we are not going to make a web uh, cart where you can say oh i want to buy this is going to be managed by dragino so he will sell the libre router as one of his products kind of um we are not interested in the commercial part of this we just want to have a router that we design and that fulfill our our needs that's that's the whole point we are not a, a commercial company or anything i i also saw i also saw there was uh Is something on the mailing list about uh something with mesh point yes uh do, do you have an update on that mesh point yeah i, I think they they have this module and uh i they are looking to integrate the Libra router into that. Meshpoint. Meshpoint. Uh, no, no. Uh, I think the website is like meshpoint.me. Yeah, it's yeah. not. Uh, I, oh, I heard no. about Meshpoint, but I'm 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 a bit lost. Ah, okay. No worries. Did, did you see it on list of Libra router? Or? Yes. Uh, I think so. My, well, we we I can check. we can check up. Okay, we can we can talk later. El termo. Ah. Hi. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to clarify, but I think you already did that. Yeah, our intention is not to sell the device, as we are a shop, so. What we did is to design a router to demonstrate this is kind of possible from the community point of view. And um, the design is there, is open, so any community can take it, can modify it, and can produce. So the idea is that people from different communities can join, maybe with other communities, and you can produce your own router based on what we did with your own needs. So, yeah. I think that's the idea behind it. Okay, and um, to take a closer look on the hardware, where can I find um, the specification sheet version 6? I see on your website, but I cannot download it. It's just a screenshot, I see. That's right. No, there is a button can to you, download. Can it. you show that? Yes. Uh, sorry. Um, you mean this? Yes, right. Mm, here you can download it. So it's a PDF. Okay. Uh, hello? Yeah. Okay. And um, uh, a fact sheet on, on the, for the hardware or for the PCB itself? Ah. That's, that's just uh, the hardware uh, specification. Where, where yeah. can I see plans for the, for the hardware? Yeah, like the Gerber uh, files. Yes, for the PCB itself. Yes, yeah. we, we, we need to upload them. We don't, I don't think we have, 
we, we haven't asked Dragino for them. Like it's it's definitely part of the contract. Like, like, like he's more than happy to to publish them, but he haven't uh, done that yet. Yes, that's that's that's. Thank you, would thank you for for reminding. Would be interesting. Yes, yes, definitely. We. Yeah, we we kept kind of a mixed. I don't know. Uh, this is. Um, we kept a kind of a mixed um, model of developing, where I don't know if this was the original idea, but it, but it came out like this, where we had like a private mailing list, which is Libre Router Devil, where s like the core team, like the committed team was there in, able to, in order to be able to discuss things that were not necessarily public at that point, like ideas or, or whatever, or more, um, um, yeah, private discussions. And from there, try to publish as much as possible. Uh, but that also takes some extra effort because that's not everything. So, for example, there was um, the... Um, Schematic, the sch yes, the schematic, the schematic that I don't think we ever published that. Yeah, so there were many versions of this schematic and now in retrospect, I think we could have published them and maybe it could have helped in some cases, like to get more eyes to look at them. But for me, uh, mm, yes, uh, we, we we managed the the best we could, kind of like. Uh, sure. Um, if if more people. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh -huh. If more people can download that, the more can see it, and, and they can give you feedback. Yeah. Yes. So at at this point, I just have this uh, PDF. Yeah. And uh, but I cannot see how the PCB is done. Yeah. I I I think I can definitely publish this today, even like after after the talk. Because it's 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 something uh, like we 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 had this political decision. We simply did not ex ex execute it, and and yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, until having this prototype, I was believing that we would never uh, like I I couldn't believe that we got to this point. <laughs> because of all the delays initially, like when we started like a year and a half ago, we hoped that we would have a prototype by end of 2016, like a year ago. So in total, because of many different factors, it got delayed like m more than a year or about a year. And it's understandable why that happened. It was a mixture of many things, but yeah. Um, yes, I think I think we could have done a bit better in terms of wider outreach to community. Because, for example, um, recently, like Daniel sent no Piotr, like this. Uh, I think he, he, he's around, like Piotr Pe Pepe two K. Do, do, do you know if... No, no, no. Okay. So he sent an email to Daniel saying, oh, like, I saw this comment on your station tree. Uh, please uh, do know that th th this can be fixed otherwise and don't, don't push this. And I was like, wow, like, people are looking. Like, I cannot believe that people are looking at each other station trees is not something that, that that's like open source should work yeah yes <laughs> yes i i understand i understand that and i and i have experience with it but i was surprised that people would look at station trees like that's something that for me it was like and, and it was like the day after it was <laughs> it kind of uh, nico was saying that it kind of gives you some uh, i don't know not clear what a station tree is uh yeah like like uh well like your private git tree yeah yeah staging <laughs> so sorry sorry so daniel daniel committed uh some code 
to to work, to make it work and push. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, but I also think like it was the first time we did something like this, and it was like a, a big overhead of organization skills that were underestimated from the beginning. So it's really interesting also to to um, share this experience with and maybe there are other ways in handling it and it's like yeah also this part is really important i think for share everything <laughs> one thing so so just to just to kind of explain a bit why we ended up managing it this way in the battle mesh in porto we did this um presentation and asked for suggestions or comments or anything and there were many people saying things like oh like you should put uh, more flash and you should put like and and suddenly we realized that maybe too many people like it was kind of a bag shed and that's not a good idea especially if you are developing hardware that this is something i understand now compiling code is something that you can do in a day compiling hardware is not something that you do in a day like if the, <laughs> if, if, if there is a bug you fix it this way <laughs> or not like the like this 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 line like you need to do a month of redesign and and pcb and like it takes maybe a month as a minimum to test your modification um, um the more people looking on your design maybe you have uh, been recognized your uh, error uh, more early yeah? so so you can can avoid such uh, problems and um, if you have the design in in the internet um, you you don't recognize that people are looking at it so and sometimes maybe you just get an email so i found an error yeah so you can uh, change that before before manufacturing your pcb yeah it's interesting because Precisely in this example of the flash, we decided to put double the amount of flash based on this suggestion at the battle mesh. Like this guy said, flash is so cheap that please put double and you can even do dual boots. And yeah, we said, yeah, why not? Like, let, let's do that. And a year after, Daniel was fighting with the SPI chip that has some hardware bug that if the f precisely because the flash was more than 16 megabytes it was th it's 32 megabytes there was a bug that or there is a bug in this in this board that um the the yeah the chip needs needs some initialization or something some details i didn't fully understand uh, and so the board cr crashes when you try to reboot it. I think that's the, the final symptom. And Daniel made a workaround, basically capping the flash to be recognized as 16 megabytes. And so we, we are not using the other half. But before that happened, like Terry and uh, like other people were like, oh, this is crashing. And they could not understand fully why. And the mail of Piotr was exposing another solution, like the proper solution. So possibly if you would have been able to involve him or publish everything, maybe we could have prevented this from happening. I don't know. So I think it's a, it's a good um, something to, to take in mind. But it's a very hard to find this, this, this balance between not bike shedding and being able to involve everyone i think it's a uh, it's it's hard and we did our best kind of or yeah we we, we try to do our uh, the best we ca we could would have a question to the communities in germany or i don't know where else you're from um, but like also with the router there will be a, a book published in how to how to use it and how to install it do you have any examples in Germany did you work on stuff like that or like I also talked to I don't know his name but he is working in refugee shelters as well in, in deploying um, the networks so I'm pretty sure you're working with non-technical people sometimes especially 
I know in the last years when the refugee crisis happened in Germany, there was some movement and also in Austria. Are there any like um, booklets or any like um, non-tech material published? It's like a question. I don't know if you have anything, if not, none, but maybe. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the answer is quite uh, difficult. Uh, to give course is very broad. Uh, we have lots of propaganda material and how to use the network, even in different languages. It should be collected in the wiki at freifunk.net and uh, the freifunk uh, GitHub uh, repositories. But there are uh, also uh, decentralized communities doing stuff on their own. So I cannot give you a full uh, overview on the published results. So, um... So Paul pa was suggesting, and I totally agree that uh, I'm going to publish in, in this same website where we have everything so far. The um, all that all that we have that we haven't published, like the schematics of this of this prototype, because I don't think it, it's a lot of value to publish the intermediate schematics. But yes, the schematic of this particular prototype, because even if it has bugs it's already valuable information and and the Gerber files of this like we can definitely ask Dragino for for them I, even I think maybe well in in, in previous uh, like in the mesh potato 2 for example he published the files directly on his website so if you go to mesh potato 2 you can download all the relevant files from dragino.com directly. But we can definitely publish them on our site as well. Because, yeah, like this is already a product. Like it's not something that will be done again, this particular shape, but it, it, it's definitely good f as a reference. Um, so, yeah, and of course, this is this is also obligatory <laughs> obligatory. Um, well, it's not very good, but it's it it's running lead. Uh, it's running lead in this case. Yeah, well now open word again, <laughs> uh, and it's running LibreMesh, which is the firmware we have been developing all these past years and that it's designed with this uh, yeah it's it, it was designed to be flexible enough so that we could simply flash this and with some yeah basically no modifications yeah it's just one to take into account that it has two radios that are on the same band so we have to to extend the configuration so that it can take a list of channels ba basically that um, yeah so I think that that would be that would be it yeah any other question thank you uh, have you done uh, wireless testing uh, I'm assuming you put the adapters, or put the radios in uh, ad hoc or yes. mesh point mode. Yes, you um, can. Uh, just so well, it's Nintendo. Uh, okay, so here, so this is. This is uh, the 
um, radio, like mm -hmm. the SOC radio. Yeah. All of them have like three, like an IP, another IP, and a mesh, the uh, 11S mesh node. Uh, yeah, interface. 11S. Uh, so, yeah, okay, so that's point. what you're doing with, for, for, for the link. Uh, yes, and also, uh, right now it's like the default way, like LibreMesh by default creates these three virtual interface in all radios that it finds. You can fine tune it and say, oh no, I want the 5 gigahertz radio to only have mesh point and not have APs, but it, it can also work because it's all Atheros and so mm -hmm. it's all hardware that we know uh, like it's a known set of bugs <laughs> that doesn't include uh, bugs with with uh, what, yeah. what kind of speeds can it uh, reliably transmit? Yeah. Good. So I tested, I tested D radios which have have been available for for longer, and I could sustain a uh, hundred and fifty megabits, like doing netperf. Mm -hmm doing netperf to my laptop mm -hmm. and um, I could sustain 150 megabits, which is basically the the mm. maximum that uh, yeah and I I tested as well with the antennas mm -hmm. I think that's published I that's but published on the on the on the web but, but but is that over the hotspot or the or the mesh interface the 150 no I think I can I can check. Um, I don't remember now, but for sure I did some some test with the laptop as a client, so testing AP mode. But right. the but the I made a kind of long longer distance, like a yeah. fifty hundred meter, and that in that case it was like maybe hundred and twenty. That's the published. That's what published on the web, mm, okay. and in that case it was over the mesh interface. So okay. using a TP link, because I did not have two of these devices, but so I used the TP link with LibreMesh and this radio with LibreMesh. And so the transfer was done over over 11S. Okay, thanks. Yes. And it also gave the, the similar result, like more than 100 megabit. How, how many did you produce now? From this board. <laughs> so we asked Dragino for eight prototypes. He made like 20, or it was his decision to make more. So is there a possibility to get one more? Is, it, is there a possibility to get one? I, I don't know, maybe. I don't know. We could, we could ask him. Um, no, no, we 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 paid for and we planned for having eight prototypes that we distributed around. So like now, two of them or no more, like four of them are in Argentina to be deployed um, in a long-term test because this this test I was talking about it was just an afternoon, but we want to see this running for months. And so we want to start that as soon as possible. Even if this is not going to be the final product, but it's at least find out more yeah. long-term bugs. I, I, I'm asking because uh, we have uh, Lede and uh, we have an own firmware uh, like Open uh, VRT. So um, the question is to get additional software on that yes. device. Yes. So, so we need one device for that. Yes, I think, I think we could definitely manage to, to do that. Yes, okay. let's talk after. After the talk. Okay. Yeah. We are almost, we can, uh, one more question. question. Yes. Yeah, <coughs> one um, didn't do before uh, about the community building. We're going to have a workshop about uh, Freifunk Hilft, which is about uh, how to include other people and how to communicate with, with uh, people out of the community and bring, it, bring them into it and how to uh, do this education. It's tomorrow at 2 o'clock. It's Monique and me. So probably you join or anybody interested would be nice. Okay. Thank you. Um, so y sh just to wrap up, yeah, the, the, the plan in the next 
few months is to deploy that. Nico, Nico Chanis in Argentina is in charge of that. He's going to put up, he just came back to Argentina after we did a hackathon last weekend. And he's going to put up the nodes with the antennas, like the, the, the full mesh node and in in two in 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 this town where community network is already running and see how it works in the long term which is going to be very useful information in terms of performance if it if it if what about the heat like in in real life scenarios like in the sun in summer all these kind of things that we can only know by testing so, thank you very much. <laughs>